first into this one. How's it going, people? Welcome to another exciting, awesome episode of Horror Research 30. Today, I have my guest, Troy. Now, I tried to pronounce your last name. I, I'm going to butcher it. It's fine. Uh, okay, so if you want to be technical and pronounce it the, the correct Hispanic way, it's Escamilla. Um, Escamilla. Oh. Because, you know, double L's in Spanish are wise. Uh, however, I grew up in Iowa, so trying to explain that to people there was, you know, got to be old. So I just always said Escamilla. But either, yeah, I know. I mean, Escamilla, that's that's easy though. It is, but yeah, again, when you're not around a lot of people that that know yeah, Spanish, that they, they will it. they will butcher it. So Trust me, I get it. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> my dad, my dad's Mexican. A lot of people don't. My dad's Mexican, my mom was white. So um yeah. That's awesome though. That's awesome. But we are here to discuss he has an Indiegogo people. Hollow Lake. Yeah, and we're here to you know kind of see what see what he can tell you know see what he's allowed to discuss and just that's, let out the let out the bag without giving away too much, of course. Yeah, you know that's the thing about launching. And I, I I was debating as as far as to when to launch this Nigogo because there's not a lot of um oh there hasn't been really anything for this specific project film yet in terms mm -hmm. to like showcase any promotional materials. And I know now Indiegogos uh, are so competitive. Uh, as you know, you can pull up Indiegogo at any time and there's dozens of films. Um, and in fact, you know, I have several filmmaker friends right now that are also running Indiegogo. It's just, you're never going to escape that, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, as an indie filmmaker, crowdfunding is so sort of one of the, the few funding sources that we have to get these films done. Um, I think a lot of people think, oh, he's, he's made three films. I've seen Mrs. Claus at, you know, at Walmart or in family video, he must have raked thousands of dollars off of those. Why is he doing an Indiegogo? I have not, I guarantee you, I have not, uh, you talk to any filmmaker who has a similar situation as I am. And I, we're not, <laughs> making, we're not making much money off of these films at all. Um, it really boils down to, I think for a lot of us, it's passion, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a horror fan through and through i've been a horror fan since i was a kid um I, I love writing i've written all of my screenplays so i just have a passion for for storytelling and for sharing my vision of horror with with audiences so um with that said i think yeah i've been i, I was because i know now like i said indiegogos are competitive so you have a lot of these indiegogos that are really like filming promotional trailers and this and that to throw it up to get people enticed and i did not do that with this film just because uh, you know it's one of those unfortunately it's one of those like plots that i, I really really want to try to keep you know as mm -hmm. i don't want to say secretive but as under wraps as possible i want people to be surprised by by it honestly yeah yeah so that's kind of why i haven't really exposed a lot of like major plot details and whatnot of of the film because it is way different than any of my previous three films can you let's see let's see let's see we know it's going to be horror people mm -hmm. um as far as subgenre, slasher paranormal or is that oh, something you kind of want to keep under wraps too no it's definitely no 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 i, I mean I, it's definitely a slasher film um okay. there are some very brutal 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 death scenes in this in this film um if now if i can execute them the way they are in my mind on screen, I think it'll really get a lot of people um, talking. Um, and I would, it's kind of like a hybrid, like a hybrid home invasion film paired with a traditional slasher. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. You know, it's the, the, the juxtaposition of the film is a couple that goes to a lake house, their lake house for a weekend and decide finally to pursue sort of an illicit encounter that one of the um, guys has been pressuring his partner into doing uh, in, in, in hopes that it'll spark their relationship. We've all heard that, right? Whether you're mm -hmm. in a gay relationship, straight relationship, it's always, oh, well, maybe if we bring in this third person, it'll give us the spark we need. Well, they decide to pursue that um, at this weekend retreat at their lake house, and it backfires horrifically. Uh, that's yeah, 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 that's a... <laughs> they yeah. were kind of spicing up what they were expecting and hoping for. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things like when it's, you know, you have to, you know, we live in an age of, you know, apps, social media, um, yeah. you know, back, back in the, before all that, you actually had to like 
go out to like maybe a bar to meet somebody or actually, mm-hmm. you know, if there were local hangout spots that, you know, you could, you could meet somebody if you were looking for whatever type of encounter you were looking for. Yeah. Right now with technology, we have all of these outlets at our fingertips where we can just open up a dating app or a hookup app and within seconds, find somebody that might be interested in hooking up with you. But the problem is you never know who you're, you know, you're inviting oh, yeah, into your, kidding. into your life, you know, and there's been yeah. real stories of people meeting people on hookup apps that have been brutally murdered. Unfortunately, it's not yeah. funny, but I mean, it no, just, no, it's, me. it's a cautionary tale really at the end of it. There you go. That works. That works. Yeah. That'll be, that's gonna be something though. That's gonna be because I, I feel like there's gonna be more to it than that. That's just like you said, you don't want to get too deep into it given the surface of it. And I'm like, this is, I know there's gonna be more to it. Oh, than yeah, that. there is. I can't there, is. there is, you know. Um, my first two films, Party Night and Mrs. Claus, were pretty straightforward slasher films. Um, mm-hmm. and I kind of compare if I had to compare Hollow Lake to any of the films, it would be Party Night because it's Party Night was a very small cast. You know, very small cast of characters, one location. Hollow Lake kind of goes back to the basics of that. Um, I, I like simplicity, but also just like budgetary concerns. You know, mm-hmm. when you start, the, the more locations you add, the more characters you add, the the higher the budget starts to go. Uh, I learned that the hard way with like Mrs. <laughs> Claus and teacher shortage. But so I wanted to take a scale it back. Um, personally, I also like, films that that give us the opportunity to get to know the characters if that makes sense and when you have such a small cast of characters that you're following i think the audience can form uh bonds with the characters a lot better than if you're just having uh characters thrown in for for fodder for the killer to kill without even getting to know who they are so i kind of that that in my mind was really important with this film as well nice nice What what got you started into the whole like, as far as writing like what is it something that as far just something you enjoyed as a kid writing or is it something more so in adulthood and and because like I think of I'm just going real quick like I think of for me like English class for example right you know they have you writing stories or adding on to a story or whatever I was always good at that my issue was like I remember <laughs> I don't remember the paper I remember the I remember the English class but. I remember the grade was the C, right? And the teacher wrote, Aaron, this was three weeks late. Had you turned this in on time, it would have been an A. This is a great paper. I'm just like, in my back of my mind, I'm like, oh, at least I did it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but so for you, did it start as like a kid or was it something you just kind of fell into more in adulthood or? No, I think it was, you know, my, my first real memory of like having a positive experience with, with writing was in third grade. When our teacher, Mrs. Kale, I still remember her, um, assigned us like this little homework or it wasn't even like it was a Halloween story. Like mm-hmm. she gave us one sentence. It was something like um, the house was dark and the house was dark and scary. Something like that was just one sentence. And the assignment was then to, to, to finish it in a paragraph, like finish the story in like a paragraph. Right. Yeah. And, you know, most of the other kids in the class wrote like two or three sentences after that. I ended up writing and this is i swear to god i was eight i was in third grade i ended up writing eight pages damn uh, yeah and turned it into her and you know um i think that that moment she was she was super like impressed and at the, i was i didn't really know it. i just had an, a story in my mind and i kept going with it so and she really encouraged me that she was like she then the next year um recommended me to go to like this young writers workshop only like a handful of students in the entire school district that I was at got to go to this and you had all of these like young adult authors there that were doing sessions with us so luckily I was encouraged at an early age to pursue writing um and I I'm also I don't know if how many people know this but I'm also an English teacher I spent 10 years oh. uh, as a, yeah as a high school English teacher um teaching. I, I mean, I've taught ninth grade. I've taught 11th grade. I've taught creative writing, journalism. Um, so I definitely have a, a strong background in writing and, and um, you know, there for a while I thought, oh, I'm going to be the next Stephen King. And I was like working on short <laughs> stories and stuff. But you know what? I found out real quick that the screenwriting format um, suits my writing style a lot better than 
like straight narrative oh, prose. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so I I, I learned I learned I, I spent like a year like researching and reading all of the screen the, like the screenwriter's bible and all of that all that stuff so that I could understand like the proper formats of screenplays and like you know the the basics of what makes a screenplay good in terms of structure yeah. and all that. So yeah, so I just found out I just figured that that um, that format suited my writing style better. That's cool though. That's cool. And, and it's really cool. Like you're saying earlier, how your teacher was just like, this is, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. You should keep doing this. And then here's other avenues to help not only encourage you to keep writing, but also get you as a, get you a better, make you a better writer. Sorry. Make you yeah, know, teach yeah. skills to be a better writer. And that, that that's really cool that she just kind of picked up on that and encouraged you. And then I guess for you at that age to realize like, Hey, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at this. And, I'm assuming you kind of liked it. I'm like, yeah. I'm all like that because you wrote all that long ass story. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, and I, I wrote, uh, yeah, like when I was in junior high too. I wrote, um, I wrote a, you know, I had a, a, a spiral notebook and ended up writing like a, a 120 handwritten, like a 120 page story about a, um, and, and the sequel uh, <laughs> about a like a haunted house, like a J, an annual JC's haunted house that was actually uh set in a real haunted house so all of the haunted house workers that year started to be like killed off and possessed by the and i was like i said i was like in sixth grade and i was writing all this stuff so but luckily yes i had very supportive teachers very supportive parents um That's good I, too. I read a lot as a kid too i was kind of that nerd that would go to the li public library and spend my saturday in the public library browsing like the horror section um, that's when i got into like true crime as well my other mm. passion is is true crime and um so yeah i was you know luckily i like i said i was encouraged i was allowed to do that stuff so yeah and i mean it's not even hard to see like horror true crime because horror you know you get the movies the shows the we get the content stuff from we get the fun stuff and then true crime that's like the real life horror this is like no this is a horror in real life this is not jason in a hockey mask no well this you know cra you some know? crazy guy named jason in a hockey mask exactly <laughs> like real a real situation, which I'm not laughing at the real situation. I'm just saying like how that craziness is with people. Well, they all say, they always say fact is stranger than fiction. And it's so, it's so interesting that some of the most, um, some of the most popular horror villains that we have, Leatherface, Norman Bates, mm -hmm. were, were, were based off of real life, true crime yeah. cases, you know, like Ed Gein yep. and, um, uh, you know, all that stuff. So true crime, I think true crime and, and horror. Yeah, definitely go hand in hand together. And like I said, when I was writing hollow Lake, when I was writing the script, which was about what, Oh, about three years ago. Now, when I started the script, there was a, uh, as I was writing it, there was this story in the news that broke about, um, uh, a kid in, uh, Michigan, uh, that went missing on like Christmas Eve and they, they tracked his phone and, and discovered that he was like, had met up with some guy on grinder, that gay dating app. And this guy like murdered this kid and had him like hanging in his basement upside down he like wow. drained his blood yeah it's real so like i was like how interesting that this makes national news just as i'm writing a story that or a script that sort of has the same vibes to it as far as the meat yeah the meat yeah 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 and yeah that's it and how long does it take you to write usually when you're uh, writing a script like if you have your the, I guess for a hollow lake, I know you said it's been three years, but how long if you have no distraction? Like, I don't know how that works. If you have no distraction, or you have a chance to just like write. Ooh, that's a good question. It's sometime. It, it really depends. Like, I don't even know how long it took to write. Maybe like two, maybe like two months. And that okay. was like, that was like taking breaks from it because I like to, I like to take, I, I feel like it's really important to step away from what you've written for at least a few days, mm -hmm. if not more. And then go back to it and, and, and read it to see if, you know, it, it yeah, still yeah. is effective as you thought it was when you wrote it. So I would say maybe two months. Um, okay. Like the Mrs. Claus script took forever. Or Mrs. Claus 2 script, Stirring, a.k.a. Mrs. Claus 2, took forever because writing a sequel, um, you know, that you, you want it to like pay a really good homage to the original and have tie-ins to the original. So ha having to constantly go back and check things in the original script to make sure that 
if they were being mentioned in the sequel that it was actually it actually happened that way you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. that's like that took a while but um hollow lake maybe two months but and you know i had every i had every intention of, of filming hollow lake like two years ago after the script was done and i went through the revision process unfortunately <laughs> that was 2020 and we all know what happened then so everything mm -hmm. got kind of delayed and pushed back so yeah yeah maybe for the better though i mean as far as maybe you came up with a few more ideas, kind of clean a few things up to where it's like, okay, now. Yeah, possibly. You know, I have, a, I've, I've assembled a really great cast for this film as well that I'm super excited about that probably would not have happened, you know, two years ago. I'm not saying I wouldn't have got a good cast two years ago, but oh, this cast, yeah, yeah, this, this cast that I have secured currently, I think is definitely the, the right fit for, for this film and, and what I'm going for. So um so i'm really excited about that now you said you started writing on third grade you were, you were obviously in the horror when you were in the third grade yeah so my next question is who got you in the horror and then what's the first movie you remember that scared you great question um my parents got me into horror the very first the very first film i ever saw in the movie theater and it was my parents that took me and my brother um and i think it was for his birthday it was for his birthday uh, and I was probably like, what, five years old, four or five years old. It was Poltergeist, the original Poltergeist. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wasn't that rated PG too? It was rated. Yeah. It had no business being rated PG. I, that, absolutely there's, not. There is some horrifying shit in that. I will tell you that face ripping scene. That was terrifying as a kid. <laughs> uh, I was, I almost shit my pants in the theater as a little kid, but you know, I left the theater and I fucking loved it. You know, mm -hmm. the adrenaline, adrenaline rush of being scared. And, um, I loved it and I wanted to go back. Like I remember begging my mom and dad to take me to go see poltergeist again. Luckily my parents were very, very, my parents both were horror fans. Uh, like my, okay. I think, I think the very first, like the, the film my mom and dad saw like on their first date was like, dawn of the dead or something like that i think they oh, remember awesome. him. so um you know we i remember like they, they took that's us awesome. they, they took us to the drive-in to see like the texas chainsaw massacre too and and all this stuff but um i grew up primarily like late 80s early 90s in the vhs days of like the mom mm -hmm. and pop vhs video stores and i see like your background you have all of the vhs tapes yep. on the shelf that was my childhood that was Same my childhood here, yes Same here. Uh, my parent, my mom would, you know, we'd go to the video rental store every weekend. My mom would let me and my brother pick out a movie. And every time our little asses went straight to the horror section and we looked at the covers, you know, and that's how you chose a film, mm -hmm. which film, which, which of these films has the most graphic or, yes. you know, gross yes. cover. And, you know, I see like Blood Lake on yours. That was one. I mean, that's a, that's such a piece of shit, but like the, <laughs> Yeah, the cover of it is like as a kid you're a tree can we can we talk about that for a minute because the, the my show has a running joke about that movie on here like i no. legit want to i hate that movie so much like i changed the rating scale on, on my on this podcast or research 30 and on um the one i call with with some friends on popcorn and pints it used to be from you know zero to ten like most people are one to ten well zero to ten yeah, because of yeah. that movie, it's from my my rating, my personal rating for any time I rate movies from a negative ten to a positive ten. Because <laughs> that shit was so bad. It is. You know. You I, know. It's. You know. It's really funny. You're gonna. I. I literally. I swear to God. I just watched that film Friday night on Tubi. Because oh I. There. There's a podcast I listened to. Um, Neon Brainiacs and their latest episode, they covered it and I was listening to it and I was laughing my ass off at their episode. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, you know what, was it, is that really that bad? Because yes. I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. Um, and you know, I think as a kid, you have a, t a higher tolerance for maybe stupidity uh, mm -hmm. as you do as an adult. So I put it on and I was watching it Friday and I'm like, Oh my fucking God, how did this ever get a distribution <laughs> deal? I, I don't know. I what and I just love that of all the movie cases you pointed out blood lake yeah. like this was just this was supposed to happen yeah but no like I really want I'm gonna keep putting this out there I want to own the rights to that movie I want to own the why I have no I, I like I feel in my mind in a weird way like I feel like it's almost like a, a badge of honor in a way to own the worst movie you've ever seen in your life to own the rights to the worst movie you've ever seen in your life 
And if I can get that, I'll figure it out. It's going on YouTube. It's going everywhere you can stream for free so people can just watch it. I'm like, listen, before you come out Horror Research 30, check this movie out. For all you people that say you've seen the worst movie in the world, no, check this movie out. For all you filmmakers that think you can't make it, check this movie out. Like, watch this. I don't even know if there were filmmakers behind that movie, but um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's, that's what, that's the thing is, you know, horror, and then uh, social media has made everyone a critic. I, I, you know, I have to just, bite my tongue so many times on like facebook if i'm scrolling through i belong to like some horror movie groups and stuff Same. and it's so toxic the, the, every other day somebody's asking like what the worst movie you've ever seen is and you will see people literally say things like hereditary get out i'm like how it's, the fuck is that the worst movie you've ever seen trust me i could show you some shit can, see, a lot of people don't i'm not gonna say all but there's a lot of people they don't I mean, if you want to use like an old school term, dig in the crates. Like you're not, you're not, you're not going to Walmart. You don't remember the big, you know, the big things that Walmart has on big barrels yeah. of movies. You're not going into Walmart basically and just digging to the bottom that movie they put in there when Walmart first opened <laughs> yeah. and grabbing that horror movie out and saying, you know what, this movie costs two dollars. I'm bringing this shit home and I'm watching it. And I'm not only am I watching it, I'm gonna watch no matter how bad it is, Blood Lake. I'm gonna watch the whole thing. No, I don't own the DVD of Blood Lake. I watch it on Tubi just like he did. Yeah, yeah but. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, is it's like for people that say like, oh, this is the worst. Movie. I'm like, you've never seen like you have to you can't just watch the hot. Ho- no, let me rephrase that because I don't want to sound like a gatekeeper gatekeeper. But to say it's the worst movie ever, I'm like, you have to watch lower budget films. Yeah. And you can't just, you know, I mean, if you're going to go if, if you want to go that route of stuff, like you have to watch lower budget films. I'm never going to say you're not a fan of something because you don't watch every single thing because that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. When it's like best or worst, I'm like, you got to open your horizon. Absolutely. And even with even with lower budget films, as far as like a really good films, like, hey, this is the, one of the better ones. Like, yeah, you should still check out some of these lower budget ones because they have a lot of them. Like they have to tell a good story for you to be interested or try to tell a good story. Hollywood just has to make it look pretty. Yeah, no. And I have a high tolerance for, you know, I have a higher tolerance for for films maybe than a lot of other people do. Mainly because I grew up in the 80s and I remember yeah, just same here. picking films up just picking films off based on their cover art and you know that's something i miss i mean i I do it here and there and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of misses with that logic but Mm -hmm. it's still fun like and and i miss that as far as like you don't really here and there you get it but it's usually like the second or third edition of when this movie comes out on blu-ray or 4k then they're like okay let's put a cool cover on it but when the movie first comes out on blu-ray it's just a generic cover and it's kind of boring i miss the vhs days where like look we have to, we want to stand out. We want to stand the fuck out with this movie cover. No matter how good or how bad the movie is, we want to stand out with this movie cover. So when people are going to buy these movies or going to rent these movies, they're going to grab our movie. And nowadays they're just like, well, I mean, it's on streaming anyway. So just throw this generic cover on here and sell it at Walmart. I'm like, no, do more than that. Yeah. Do yeah. No, they had, yeah, they, they had, you know, here, like even on Tubi, it's almost, you, you can scroll through Tubi and see tons of like, cover arts that are films i've never heard of but you also have the um the convenience of being able to play a trailer right then and there yeah you were in the a video store in the 80s you could not do that you were solely making your decision based off of the film's cover exactly. art. And uh and I, like, yeah and like some I, of my I, most memorable like films that i absolutely love to death today that i know aren't great like, like one of my i'm a big 80s like 80 slashers are my thing yes. all of my films are definitely throwbacks to 80 slasher films like I love films like The Mutilator. I fucking love that movie. I know it's, mm-hmm. but I mean, I don't know. I mean, Sleepaway Camp, of course. All the the all of these uh you yeah. know, 80s slashers that sold me solely on cover art, but and then but then also just I don't know. Did you something. Had fun with the films. Yeah, you had fun yeah. With the films. Mm-hmm. On top of that, and I mean, yeah, like you said, they weren't the best films in the world. Of course, they're not the greatest stories, but they were entertaining, and you still watch those films to this day. Like oh, I know, I, I still watch those films to this day, and I mean, you you make movies, and uh, your films are kind of based off of what you loved as a kid, and I I get that, I respect that, I understand it. I mean, my podcast is based off of horror, what I loved as a kid. Yeah, as I loved as a kid, it's just like it it it, it 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 sticks with you. It definitely sticks with you. It does, in one way or another. And then you're just like, oh man, that reminds me of Friday the Thirteenth, or oh man, that reminds me of Sleepaway Camp, like you said, or just this and. When you have those, like it's like okay, you know what? This movie came out in 1986. Now let me check out something else that came out in this this year. These slashes this year, and 
the ones that you you know when the, when certain ones come out, like say you know the popular the Friday the Thirteenth, so there'll be a, a copy version, like you know, and you're just like, all right, this movie is just not good at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's bad. Like I'm gonna finish it. And I know again, Friday the Thirteenth is my favorite franchise of just like every movie ever, just because of the nostalgia of it. You love it. it. Got it's what I think it's something that I don't know if it's what necessarily got me in the horror. If it's the first horror movie I seen, I kind of doubt it. But it's something that definitely kept me there from my childhood on up because Friday the 13th, USA Network. Yeah. They were showing that all week, not just all day, all weekend. So it's like, and of course they cut out, you know, the the, the blood, guts, and boobs. So your parents aren't going to get mad. Well, for me, my parents didn't, they didn't care if I watched horror too much. My father didn't care. My mother would. But that right there, like all the, ed- it's all edited anyway. So it's yeah. Like, go ahead, go ahead and knock yourself out. Watch it, watch it, watch it. And I feel like that's probably why it's my favorite of, everything because you get to watch i got to watch it so freaking much to where like especially with the first eight and i just did a review on them I, we, I, we actually did um freddy versus jason we went franchise versus franchise okay. but we watched one movie one movie versus one movie per episode and like doing it that way i didn't i mean i'd like the nightmare on Elm street franchise but i don't know it as well as i know the jason one and it's to the point where it's like i really do really know these movies not necessarily word for word but kind of like scenes like i could be doing something in the other room and just hear the movie going i'm like i remember this part oh i remember yeah. this part like I, oh, yeah. I remember this part and it's just i love it i love it like i forget everything else but i remember this part of the damn movie yeah no friday the 13th is a great free i mean yeah i think i think us horror fans that grew up during that time definitely have a fondness for friday the 13th um you know i i i love the franchise i think it's probably you know i i it definitely has some misses but at least it's at least it's like the most the franchise of the of the major ones that really tried to do a little bit things things a little differently at some of the later entries i mean you had telekinesis you had space travel you had all that shit um uh, you know it's not at least it's not like halloween that never has really done anything interesting it just kind of keeps rehashing itself over and over and now i mean they tried with part three, but people didn't like it back then. No, no. And now it's just become like a, kind of like this jumbled choose your own adventure type mess as far as where you want to go, you, you know? Um, but I still, yeah. I still have a fondness for Halloween. Oh, yeah, uh, but yeah, oh, yeah. Friday the 13th. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, it's definitely the franchise I would say that got me really into s- slasher films, especially. Would you, Oh, here's a two parter. Would you ever do a a slasher or not a slasher film? A franchise yourself? Like my own franchise, or like are you talking about like that's a, that's a great okay? So now okay. you just add an extra layer. No, well, no you add because... an extra layer, and I like that. So let's let's first let's start with let's start with fan film first, and then I'll get to the other. Would you ever do a fan film? And if you would, who would it be? If you would, who would you? Okay. Um have to answer this question carefully because i have a lot of friends who have done fan films um going. to be to be honest with you for me um i have seen some great fan films yeah. okay i have really seen some great fans some of my friends have made great fan films some of my friends have made fan films that rival some of the actual films in the real franchise um for me personally just because i know uh in my mind i have lots of different stories that I could tell. Like right now I have, I have two other scripts outside of, uh, hollow Lake and Mrs. Claus too. You know, to me, raising funds and getting money is a huge part of filmmaking. It's the hardest part of filmmaking. Um, if I'm going to put time, energy, effort into raising funds, um, Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it for my own original idea. Does that make sense? Understandable. Uh, because fan films are a really hairy situation because you know you're you're using someone else's intellectual property so there's all kinds of legal issues that come into yeah. play with fan with fan films in terms of profiting off of it and where it can be shown and, yeah. and whatnot you know i i feel like those stories that are already there to be told I, i'm going to use my resources crowdfunding is a bitch it's a fucking bitch I'm in the middle of it right now with hollow Lake. It consumes your life. It's not easy. People think people think you just create a, an Indiegogo and throw it up there. A lot of filmmakers do, and that's why they never even come close to meeting their goal. But if you want your film, if you want to meet your goal, you are constantly coming up with different promotional things to post. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a time consuming effort, which 
in my mind, like, I don't want to put that time and energy into something that's really at the end of the day, not necessarily that my, is. yeah. I respect that. Um, with that said, if I could, I mean, if I could do a, a, a fan film, um, if you're asking me that, like what franchise would I choose? Yeah. That's uh, um, you know, I, I think it would, you know, I, I would say gun to my head right now. You have to do a fan film. Which franchise are you going to pick? I would say sleepaway camp because Ooh. there has, there hasn't been a really good sleepaway camp film for a long time. And, you know, they, they tried to, um, you know, oh, about a decade ago, they came out with return to sleepaway camp. Yeah. Uh, part four, which brought like Felissa Rose back and stuff like that. But to me, you want to talk about a bad film. Um, I, I don't know how that film turned out so terrible when it had the original director and writer behind it, but it's just, it was, it was a mess. And I do think that the sleepaway camp franchise has some, some really interesting, uh, albeit controversial themes that run through it that I think in the hands of like mm -hmm. the right screenwriter. And I'm not even saying that's me, trust me. I'm not like being, Oh, I could, but I think in the hands of someone that could handle that commentary, that social commentary that is undoubtedly embedded in the sleepaway franchise. Yeah. I bring it to modern day where that, where, where those, um, those issues are at the forefront of a lot of, a lot of social issues that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Right. You could really make it an interesting film that makes a statement about something. And I think it would be interesting to try. Now, if I wanted to just have balls out fun, I, I would love to make a fucking scream fan film. Ooh. Scream to me is one of the most solid franchises out there. Um, and I hate and, those movies. <laughs> you, I, I I cannot like I'll um, watch them though. Don't get me wrong, I'll watch them. Like I just went and watched. Me and the wife went and watched uh, Six when that came out. Because anytime a horror movie comes out in theaters, as long oh, as yeah. the fun, we're going. But I was just never, ever, ever. Even when the first one came out, I was just never a fan of those movies. I just never liked. Them. I'll watch it. It's horror. I'm gonna yeah. watch it. And then I'm a completionist. Like you watch I, one. I'm already, I'm already talking about like I know part seven's coming out next year. I was already telling my friends, I was like, I'm gonna event I'm gonna go through the whole front before I watch seven or go through and watch them all. Cause those are the type of movies I'll watch maybe I know I've seen part one and two multiple times. I don't know how many times, but it's something like when a new one comes out, I'll go through me and the wife will go through and just start from one and watch the whole franchise. We didn't do it for part six, but gonna do it for part seven. But I just never that's that's interesting. Never liked you. Yeah, I never liked that franchise. I, it's one I think for me it's one of the most solid franchises. The only scream film I really don't necessarily like is three. Um, mm -hmm. like I rewatched four recently because uh, on my podcast we covered it and I nice. I, I uh, found a great a much greater appreciation for it. I loved six. Um, the problem I have with the scream franchise is a lot of the same things I hear is like they need to take risks um with the characters i know they killed off dewey in part five spoiler if you haven't seen it whatever it's been years yeah. um you know but i think they need to take bigger risks with the characters and whatnot so i don't know um it would be fun i had a, my friend uh one of my acquaintance acquaintances in houston uh zach salazar he did a scream fan film that is actually really really good um okay. nice. yeah so i don't know there's i mean I don't know. I'd say Black Christmas is my favorite horror film of all time is Black Christmas. And I always thought that the original one. And I always yeah. thought that that deserved a proper sequel. But in fact, actually, uh, about a year ago, a fan film came out called um, It's Me, Billy. That is a direct sequel to the original Black Christmas. It's actually really good. Ooh, so I am not saying there aren't good fan films out there. There are. Oh, no, you're just, it's just not for you as far as make, yeah, well, creating one. I guess if, you know, I guess if you like want to, you know, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a new filmmaker and you want to like get your, get something made that can get attention, then maybe that would be a good yeah. outlet for you. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my, though. yeah, that's my right, idea. And that's then, my... As, what about an original franchise? Let's just say, just to make it easy, let's just say five, four or five movies franchise slasher. I am working on it. Ooh. I mean, I haven't, like I said, my, the, my, my film that I plan to do. Okay. Let's, so let's say hollow Lake gets, reaches its Indiegogo goal. We're at 60%. We still have like 22 days left. I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, my next project is going to be something that I have been telling people I'm doing now for years and haven't done because I had an issue with the distributor, but it is Mrs. Claus too. 
um, which will be a sequel to my 2018 film, Mrs. Claus. Uh, my original title for the film was Stirring, but it got changed by the distributor, which has been part of the problem with trying to do a sequel. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. Everything is squared away now. So Mrs. Claus 2 will bring back um, some of the characters from the original film okay. um, and continue the story uh, two years later after the events of the first film. Um, there's a lot of really cool tie-ins to the first one. I feel like people that have seen the first one will really appreciate the um, the tie-ins to the first one. Mm -hmm. But it's also super unique in my mind. And I, I just posted this on my Facebook page because I saw somebody post this question and I'm like, fuck, I'm doing it. So mm -hmm. shut your mouth. It was like, oh, has anybody ever thought to do a Christmas themed slasher, but set it on Halloween? Um, well, that's Mrs. Claus too. Um, that's been Mrs. Claus too. Mrs. Claus too. the poster art that I have for Mrs. Claus too, that I've had now for about th two, three years. If you look it up, you'll see it's miss. It, it takes the Mrs. Claus two takes place on Halloween. Mm -hmm. But it is, but it's the killer Mrs. Claus from the first, well, not the same killer, but the killer in the Mrs. Claus disguise, um, who has, you know, come back on Halloween to finish some business with the survivor of the first film. And, you know, it takes place in the same little college town. So like, like anything, you know, all of the college kids think it's really cool that their, their college and their town has now become associated with a, a, a Mrs. Claus killer. So like the really cool costume of the moment in this little college town is the Mrs. Claus costume. So you have sort of like scream, uh, scream six or like or scream four. you have a scenario where at any given time, there's tons of people dressed in the Mrs. Claus costume. So who is really the, you know, so Mrs. Claus, mm -hmm. the real killer has, uh, the ability to kind of weave in and out and, and commit these horrific murders without really being caught. Um, now it does, it does towards the end of the film. And see, you're getting, this is the first time anybody's really hearing about the plot, but like um, towards the end of the film, it does the setting gets confined to a specific house, like a farmhouse where a party frat, frat parties got moved to right. so that Mrs. Claus then can wreak havoc on the primary uh, characters that are in part two. We have a cast of colorful characters. Uh, you get the, the killer reveal. I really, 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 really wanted to try to top the twist in Mrs. Claus, the original Mrs. Claus. Mm -hmm. um, so that took a lot of thought and effort to try to do because I know a lot of people were really caught off guard with the twist in Mrs. Claus, which uh, was kind of cool that nobody really guessed the twist. So uh, I try to top that in the sequel. So it's a lot of fun. Like to me, I will be honest with you guys. Mrs. Claus two is probably the, my favorite script that I've written. Oh yeah. Ooh. By far, by far, by far. That's awesome. That mm -hmm. that's all. And I, I love that you said that. Cause I like asking people like, what's your favorite movie you've done so far? And some, some will respond. Some will give the, you know, it's like choosing your favorite child, which some parents have no problem doing. <laughs> but I, I like how you said that because it, it it just shows like, you know, you have a favorite. You have maybe there was one story or something. You're like, I have this story. I want to get it down. For every reason, I couldn't get it out, which for you, the distributing crap. And I mean, got that yeah, well, you, yeah. I mean, if you ask me what my favorite film that actually is done is, I would have to say it's tough. I go be. I go between Mrs. Claus and teacher shortage. Um, I think Mrs. Claus is tons of fun. I, like I said, my favorite horror film of all time is black Christmas. Yeah. I, I love Christmas themed horror films. I, I love them. Uh, I've seen some terrible ones, but for the most part, yeah. I love Christmas themed horror films. Like I'm glad like the new terrifier three is now has been revealed as a Christmas themed slasher because that's going to be awesome. So yeah. You know, Mrs. Claus, I, I like the, I, I have fun with that film. I have a lot of fond memories of making that film, which I think maybe <sighs> clouds some of the negative issues that the film itself has. But uh, on the flip side, then I think teacher shortage of, of my films is probably the most mature, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, it's the one that really un has an underlying message to it that the other two don't because i'm a i've been in public education now for 18 years so teacher shortage while it's a slasher film at heart um it also makes a statement about the state of public education 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of one of the few films I've ever seen, if it's if not the only film I've ever seen, where a killer is actually targeting teachers and not students. Hmm, but, for a, but for a specific reason that's revealed at the end with kind of like the killer, the, the classic killer reveal. I love, I love, love, love a good scream-esque, uh, urban mm -hmm. legend-esque killer reveal. I love it. A killer yep. revealing. The, so Mrs. Claus has it. Teacher Shortage has it. Mrs. Claus 2 has it. Hollow Lake will have it. I love it. Love it. Speaking of Mrs. Claus, too, really quick, because you did say there's a poster out there. I, uh -huh. I found one. Yes. I'm just going to ask you if this is the one right here. Yeah, see? It's a Halloween theme. Are that is it. Pumpkins. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the artist, Casey Booth, um, created that artwork for me. About God, it's been a while. It's been about two years ago now. Um, he's a great artist. He's he's done a lot of um, our posters for the Houston Horror Film Festival. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's real cool. And I guess while I have the screen sharing going on, pull up the Indiegogo for you guys to go check out. Yes, we are at, see, we're almost at, uh, we're almost at 60%. Um, we have 23 days left. Uh, there'll be some cool things announced on the Indiegogo. Um, we have, you can scroll down and see the cast, read more about the project. Yeah. Um, perks. The perks. I like to keep the perks simple. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's, I, I was surprised at how, how well the, the Indiegogo did when it first was launched. We hit, we hit 40% like within the first day. That's uh, really good. Yeah. And now we're just kind of in that mid campaign slump. Um, it's really hard to get people motivated to pledge to a project when they look at it and see, oh, well, they still have, you know, uh, however many days left. I'll just get to it another time. Um, but yeah. Like, but like, yeah, because most of the funds for our crowdfunding campaign are raised like within the first 48 hours and like the last 48 hours. I think something like 60% 60, okay. 60 of the funds you'll raise uh, come during that period. But I don't know. There are some people that are doing amazing things with crowdfunding and they can throw up a crowdfunding campaign and have it funded like within three days. I need to know their secrets. <laughs> Luckily, I mean, all three of my previous films were crowdfunded and they were all successful. Um, That's good. So it's just uh, kind of a pain. <laughs> That's good, though. But I mean, you the thing is, too, with you, you have you have proof that you've done where you got three three movies out right now. And you got the crowdfunding for this one going. Which... Yeah, that's the thing. Um you know, crowdfunding is interesting because I, I, I do, you know, I have so many, I have, you know, tons of friends on Facebook, not, I mean, I've, I've been on there forever. It's just, you, you, you know, that you, you accumulate all yes. these people that add you. Yep. Um, and it's just interesting to see like what types of films like meet their goal quickly, what types of films don't, um, you know, you, and I think it just, I always say, you know, with, with my films, with, with crowdfunding, you'll know. A, that I'm going to get my films done. I have the history of getting my films done. Mm -hmm. And B, that you'll get your perks. Um, personally, I know I have, I've contributed to several crowdfunding campaigns where I still have not ever received a perk or the film has just never gotten made. And it's been yeah, like four I, or five years. I've, 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 res I've had uh, backed a couple and now I'm a little more cautious. I'm like, all right, let me see if this person actually completed a film before well, or not. And that's, and I think... I think that's another thing that makes crowdfunding difficult for, for filmmakers is that I haven't done, I haven't done a crowdfunding campaign for what, five years now. Teacher shortage was my last one. So it's been a while. I've been away a while and I know crowd, the crowdfunding landscape has changed tremendously mm -hmm. and it's much harder to get just, you know, I don't want to say random people, but just people that you're not really associated with to want to pledge yeah. to your film. Um, there are, there are, filmmakers that have built a, a strong base that will support their films because they know they're going to get done. They know they're going to get mm -hmm. their perks. Unfortunately, so many people have been burned by crowdfunding and, and people that have not made a movie or fulfilled the perks that it, it has become a little bit more challenging. There's yeah, that's understand. There's that. And then there is now, which I'm going to say this out here, people, and I'm glad you don't do this. You, I love what you did. Like where you just make a post like, Hey, is there any podcast out there that'll have me on for interviews? This, that, and the third. I hate when people will inbox and also inbox is their crowdfunding. And then that's it. 
if you do that, I'm not I'm not supporting your movie. And now what I'm going to start doing is telling all my friends, like, listen, this person right here, all they're doing is dropping something in the inbox. And because that's I, I don't like that. I don't like where you just it's one thing if you're having a conversation, if you have that repertoire with somebody, like, hey, by the way, I'm glad my, you know, I'm, we were talking about this. My Indiegogo is coming out. Could you check it out? Maybe share it. But to just drop it in or like when someone will add you and then they'll just drop it in and then that's it. I'm uh, No, I, you know, I, I, I guess I just try to be respectful. Um, yeah. I even like, you know, and, and it's one of those things that some people have the mentality is, hey, I'm trying to make a film. I got to do whatever I can to get that done. Well, yeah, but uh, there's better yeah. ways of doing it. There though. is like, better hey, ways like, of doing it. The way, like the way you're doing it. Hey, any podcasters out there that would do it and just reaching out to friends. And I even feel bad. Like I feel terrible, like using like the at everyone, you know, you have a group and you do that at everyone. Yeah. I hate that guys. I hate it, but I have a, I have a group for hollow Lake and I've done it twice. And I always apologize, but I feel like it's, you know, Facebook, Facebook has, has suppressed, you know, a lot tremendously. So I know that my view on certain things, my views Mm -hmm. are people that are seeing the posts aren't that see, that's different though. And I say that's different one. You're not going into the person's quote unquote personal space. I guess you would say on Facebook, which is their inbox and like, here's my movie. That's, that's you basically like, yo, Here's my hangout spot on Facebook in my horror group. And I'm going to at you guys here. I'm going to tag you guys on this because you guys came to this group. So yeah. that, that I'm, I don't yeah. care about that. that. That's more understandable that I get that. I understand that I respect because that's, you, you made the group to get the attention. You made the group. Or yeah. the specific people, group to get the attention. people get so bad out of shape about that at everything tag at everyone tag. And I get it, but you know what? I, I guess I'm to the point where I, 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 I can, I can scroll past, like I see it pop up in my notifications, like, okay, whatever I scroll up. I don't get Ben. I don't leave the group. Um, because I realize that Facebook has, has suppressed yeah, or, or does suppress so many posts. Like if you, if you make a post, like if you notice, and I think, I think all indie filmmakers have caught on to this, that do crowdfunding campaigns because they all do it now. But if you're trying to do a crowdfunding campaign, here's a little, just a slight little tidbit of info for you. If you just post, like if you create a post and post the link to the Indiegogo page in it and just post that, the amount of views you get are severely limited. Like, I don't care if you have 5,000 friends out of those 5,000 friends, probably three of them are going to see it. If you post just the link to the Indiegogo, Mm -hmm. which you see a lot of filmmakers do, like what I have been doing is you have to create an image, you know, an image. And, and then in, in the post, describe what it is. And then in the comments, post the link to the Indiegogo. More people will see. For some reason, Facebook suppresses any posts that have like a crowdfunding campaign link or anything. You know what it is? It's I think all the social media, if it's not their direct link, like, yeah. hey, come to check out my Facebook group. It's like, oh, you're telling them to go from Facebook to somewhere else. Yeah, they don't not only to go somewhere else, but to spend money. Oh no, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get creative, and you know that's the thing is like nowadays. Whew. But at the same time, they'll they'll flood your feed with a bunch of stupid ass ads you give no shits about, don't even pay attention to, and it's no, like, no. uh, no thank, no thank you, Facebook. Well, how creepy no. is that too? Like you, you're 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 googling something, and then you go on Facebook, and all of a sudden you see ads for everything for you were Google. Yeah, like I like I don't know. I know this is stupid. I just bought a house. I just moved it. Uh, so I was looking like yesterday or something. I was looking at uh, artificial Christmas trees, whatever. And then I get on Facebook this morning and literally every ad is for artificial. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's your business, Facebook. Ugh, Stop yeah. putting these ads up and spread my movie around. <laughs> right. Right. So, I mean, that's the thing is I, and I know, you know, I know it probably annoys people that you, you know, that you constantly post your, your crowdfunding campaign, but you know, you got to do no, what you got to do. Again, that's, that's different. I feel like that, that, that's to be expected. Like you posting it on the pages, you're even going in certain groups where it's like, Hey, am I allowed to do this? Blah, 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 blah. Cool. And then to me, like it's for me, it's, it's the inboxing. I hate that shit. Cause it's literally, and I've seen so many people make posts about it. This just this past week, actually some friends and all that. Like I'm not going to support your movie. If you just add me as a friend, or if you just randomly message me, we've never had a conversation before. You drop your Indiegogo, and then that's it. Yeah, I get that. I've, I've gotten that quite a bit. Um, and it's just, it, 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 it's no, just as, it, it's just as, as no, as annoying as, oh, I know it's like, but it, it, I, okay. It's just as annoying maybe as somebody that you've never had a conversation with or who's never liked any of your posts or anything, but then all of a sudden sees that you're making a movie 
and then inbox you inboxes you about oh can i can i be cast in your movie or whatever yeah, or, exactly. hey can i, I do i'm like there's direct there's proper ways to go about that like you know yes. um so yeah i mean i get it people people are mm -hmm. people are need are trying to get work or trying to get themselves out there I totally and, and i like i i get it i get it as far as like trying to get the eyes the shares the finances whatever it is for whatever you're trying to do but there's a right there's there's better ways of going about it there's yeah. better ways of going about so, it so shooting in people's inboxes doesn't work and all that other dumb it's like just make a post about it make a page about it invite some friends have your friends invite some friends and kind of go from there and spread the word and if people are interested they'll check it out yeah um yeah and i, I mean I don't think anybody, I don't think any filmmaker would ever lie to you and tell you they love crowdfunding. I don't think any filmmaker <laughs> loves crowdfunding. Um, you know, I, I, I look at it as, uh, just as a way for, you know, I mean, the films, if it makes its goal, it's going to get made. So you are have yeah. the opportunity to, 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 to get some, basically it's like pre-ordering you're pre-ordering the blu-ray that's how i phrase it in my in my post hey pre-order the blu-ray pre-order the dvd because it mm -hmm. does make it sound like yes it is getting made this is your opportunity to, to pre-order it before anybody else gets to the film um but uh i don't know um hopefully hollow lake reaches its goal um like i said there's 20 what 23 days left 23 days left. yep 60 percent. i feel pretty pretty confident um I'll have my last, I'll post my last casting notice, um, tomorrow so I can drop something fresh for people. Um, there so that'll go. be the, all the, I, like I said, this is a small cast. There's only, um, like five, five principal characters in the, in the film, which is small, okay. but don't yeah. let that, don't let that fool you because trust me, the brutality that this film, uh, inflicts, <laughs> on, <laughs> inflicts on some of these people is, and unlike and I, I hate to, I, as, as unlike anything you probably have seen like there's one particular death scene in hollow lake um that i have never seen done in a film oh Ooh. um and like and i i'm not exaggerating like every actor that has read this script that has right. you know that has auditioned has and i've posted some of their responses right on my face but they're like damn this is this is brutal this is going to get people talking like this is some some severe shit um so uh with this film i guess i just i just kind of wanted to, to push some boundaries and get a conversation started mm -hmm. about like certain that. things that go on um and certain things that are excused because of whatever so yeah. I, if, if it sounds like i mean if you like your films brutal um this is like i said there's one specific death scene that i've never seen done there you go that sells it right there. And I, <laughs> and trust me, right there. trust me, guys. I have seen lots of films. I have seen thousands. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've never seen it done. Oh, this is it's intriguing. It's intriguing, it is, guys. Yeah. It's yeah. intriguing. We got to check this out. We got to check to get that thing back. Share the links, which I do because we wrap this up soon. But I do have the link in the description. I just dropped oh, the yeah, link yeah. in the comments and posted it. Or start it so it'll be at the top of the comments and all that cool but yeah man this was fun no and, uh, definitely i have to come on and just chat horror in general oh because, shit yeah. every so tuesdays and thursdays we do some reviews so i have to i have to have you on the review some movies with us sometimes oh yeah absolutely that's what i mean that's what my my pod i have a podcast dark night of the podcast that i host with my friend uh he actually is one he's in, he's was in teacher shortage he's gonna be in um hollow lake roger connors uh right. and we uh yeah we were like 118 episodes into this podcast we started it during covid which seems to be when a lot of podcasts started i think a lot of people had a free time on their hands so like hey oh, let's yeah. start a podcast. but but we we survived we're still going strong 118 episodes and we basically choose a film one film and just have a long deep conversation about yeah. it our last episode was halloween 2 the original halloween 2 so uh, i love deep diving into films so yeah anytime i would love to come oh, on yeah. Oh, it's a it's a fun freaking time. And yeah, the last episode we did over here on Horror Research 30 was actually it was wrapping up the Freddy vs. Jason thing. So we we did all those. So we did um eight, nine, and ten of, of uh nightmare or not nightmare of Friday the thirteenth. Okay. The bottom the bottom three in my in my opinion. But yeah, you know, yeah. I uh yeah you still I love mean, them. You still love them. You still love them. But they're like 
Yeah, it, it's it it's like when you have like that favorite cousin and all that. It's like you invite or your least favorite cousin. It's like those they come over like once in a while because they they act up too much. My mom don't want them here all the time. <laughs> yeah, but you'll watch them. You'll watch them if they're on. Yeah, you know, course. I'm not gonna change the channel if it pops on. But yeah, yeah, I actually like, yeah. I, I don't hate those films at all. I like them. I don't love them all. I don't love those three. I like them. The only one I really find a, that I really have a hard time getting into, and God, I've tried. And I've, I've watched it. I've seen it. But I really just have a hard time is uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Same here. It's just for some reason, it just I just it just doesn't capture my attention. I have a hard and, time. And, and I mean, you would think because it's like, oh, he didn't they didn't do anything ridiculous. Like to put him in the space, put him in space. You would think that that the space would be the one that's like. But that's oh, it, man. that's but it's fun. It's entertaining it's so as hell. Fun. Friday versus Jason, I think, or not Friday. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell suffers from the fact that it's just not a it's not a fun movie. Like it's just yeah. There's always there was always a sense of fun tongue and cheekness that ran through that franchise, and it's just not there in Freddy vs. or Jason Goes to Hell. So it makes yeah. it a, it makes it a tough watch. It takes itself way too seriously. Yeah, and he had a sister out of nowhere and shit. Just it was yeah. it was too much. It was too much. But yeah, <laughs> but surely, but yeah, guys. So yeah, check out check out Hollow Lake. Hopefully, like Thanks. I said, fingers crossed, it'll um, get done. We have a, a great cast. Like I said, I'm thrilled with the cast. Um, so it is. The plan is just so you know, you have an idea. Uh, if you do decide to support the film, like when it'll be done, the plan is to film uh, this June in uh, the Cleveland. Yeah, the, see, I'm a teacher, so I, I still am a teacher. So it makes sense for me. I have the summers off. So there you go. that's if I'm ever going to make a movie, it's going to be June or July. All three of my films were filmed in June or July because I'm off. So I have all the time to do it. So and I don't like to I'm not I'm not the type of person that likes to film over like I, I know people that have done it and it's, it works brilliantly for them. We're like they film a film over the course of a year, like every weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I know like the Death Drop Gorgeous guys did that. And Brandon, Brandon um, Paris is going to be in Hollow Lake, which is. I'm thrilled. He's a great filmmaker. He did Death Drop Gorgeous, Death Drop Gorgeous, and Saint Drogo. Um, but like for me, I, I would lose my mind. Like just trying to keep mm -hmm. track of continuity and all that shit. No. So I just do. <laughs> I do it straight over a course of like right, whatever, 15 days, mainly. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But yeah, nice. so film it in June. It should be then you know at least ready to be somewhat screened by December, November of next year. Nice. And then it'll be Mrs. Claus too. Yay. There you go. There you go. Can't wait for that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that really yeah. is going to be fun. I guarantee it. People, people have a blast with that one. Now with Mrs. Claus too, are you, so, cause we did mention franchise. Are you doing, how many movies do you plan on doing with that? Like, um, so the ending of Mrs. Claus, two, I would, I will just leave this here. The ending <laughs> of Mrs. Claus to begs for, a Mrs. Claus three. Okay. Like it's an that. open ending. Like the, the film is going to end and people are like, okay, there has to be a Mrs. Claus three now. Right. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That yeah. is fair. How many, how four. many, how many would I take? I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, I think a nice trilogy might, might wrap up that whole nice thing. Trilogy? Nicely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He may change his mind though. People just wait. I don't even yeah. know him, but I'm just saying, I don't know him well, just from this, hour we were well, talking it depends on how well, i mean it depends on how well they oh, do it depends on how true. you know if, Very if, true. uh i would i definitely would say mrs claus is my best or not my best but my most known film like um you know it it did pretty well sales wise mm -hmm. and and you know like the trailer for it has like almost a million views on youtube i mean it's awesome. it's done pretty well so i mean who knows people maybe people are begging for you know Mrs. Claus to go on a rampage on Valentine's Day or pa St. Patrick's Day or Thanksgiving. I don't know. Oh, so she's just gonna go wherever the hell she wants. Yeah. So yeah. you guys listen. Yeah. No, I would probably if I did a see if I did the third one, I would probably take it back to Christmas. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Kind of nice 180 or 380. Yeah. Cool. Back to where it started. But yeah. So there. Yeah. So there's definitely some possibilities. Nice. Nice. Now, before we wrap this one up, you want to let the lovely people know where we can, where they can find you, and then I'll let you go and do my little closing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Troy, Troy Escamilla. You can find me on, if you want to add me on Facebook, I'm I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, Instagram, Troy ESC. 
Twitter, Troy Escamilla. Uh, Hollow Lake has its own Facebook group uh, where I do post, you know, casting updates, news, things like that related to the film. So check that out. I also, like I said, I, I host a, a host a, a podcast, Dark Night of the Podcast, that you can find on like Apple Podcasts, any podcast app, find it. Um, like I said, we're about 118 episodes in. Uh, have a lot of fun doing that, and you know we we de- we dive deep into film. So if you want want to get more of my perspective on various horror films, check that out. But but also like I said, check out the Hollow Lake uh, Indiegogo. Anything you can throw at it, uh, there's lots of perks available, and let's nice. get that goal. Whew. That's what that's what we're working at. Hell yeah, get that out there, people. Go check it out, and again. Don't at the very if you can't afford to, you know, back the Indiegogo, just that share, just hit share. that share. Yeah, that I share. mean, I, share the link because it does it does help because then Indiegogo kind of has an algorithm where they they see which how many campaign or which campaigns are getting shared on social media and that might uh, encourage them then to to feature the film on on their you know their page of featured projects. So mm. check it. Yeah, even a share helps. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. And I want to thank you for coming on. I had a great time. Yeah, definitely going to have you on again. We'll definitely be talking in the near future. Oh, absolutely. Fine. Yeah, I def- let's pick a, pick, a, pick a cheesy 80 slasher film to review, and I am totally on. Boom. Boom. Perfect. You heard it. You heard yeah, it. I'm holding absolutely. to it, people. I'm holding I, to it. <laughs> I will be there. I will be there. But again, man, thank you so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate you coming on. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your day. And people, again, go check them out. Go yes, back to Cindy Go. Hit the at least hit the share again. At least hit the share, but at least go give it a look. Go give it a look and have a great day, Tony. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. You too. Thank you for having me on. It was a blast. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye. Have a good one, sir. You too. Have a good one, man. Now, for all of you, listen, you follow Horror Research 30, Facebook, you already know, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, X, all that fun stuff at underscore search 30 or research 30. You can just Google horror search 30 and find all the stuff there, but um, we'll be back Tuesday, eight o'clock Eastern time. Uh, we got some fun stuff. Just, just, just keep paying attention. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. You'll know if not today, you will know tomorrow, but on that note, I will see you in your nightmares. You guys have a great rest of your day. Fuck the Cowboys. Peace. <laughs>